The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. It's Megan Shamus, the Marketing Director for the FIDO Alliance. We're looking forward to the webinar today. Uh, we're going to be sharing, me along with Andrew Shikiar, some of our research that we did recently and talking through our new consumer-oriented website, loginwithfido.com. So thanks, thanks to you all for coming. Uh, before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. So you're all in listen-only mode, but you can ask questions at any time using the GoToWebinar client. So please do so. We will have Q&A at the end. Um, we are recording the webinar. We'll send along the slides and the recording um, in the next few days after the webinar. And then please do stay, stay on the line to take the survey at the conclusion of the webinar. Um, it's really helpful for us and helps to inform our webinar program and other programs that we do throughout the year. Today's speakers, let me introduce them. There's me, <laughs> Megan Shamus, Director of Marketing for Fido Alliance. And we have Andrew Shikiar, who is our Executive Director and Chief Marketing Officer. And here's what we're gonna to cover today. So Andrew will talk through some FIDO updates, which it's, it'll help uncover some of the reasons why we're introducing consumer level assets now. And then I'll cover the research findings. I'll give an overview on the new website, and then we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. Okay, Andrew, you ready to give the FIDO updates? Yeah, that's great, Megan. Thanks so much. Um, and it's great to see, see so many of you join. You know, we're looking at the list of names here. I see some familiar names, some new names. So um, thanks for making time today. Um, for those of you who are new, let me just kind of recap on you know, FIDO's kind of reason for being and, and, and our focus to really set the stage for, um, you know, why we did this research and, and kind of the impetus behind some of the new initiatives that we have, which Megan will go into momentarily. Um, you know, simply put, FIDO was founded to address the data breach problem. Um, and the tip of the spear of the data breach problem are passwords. Um, passwords cause the vast majority of data breaches and, and the, you know, so many you know, challenges and, and problems for consumers and businesses alike. Um, you know, the landscape we inherited is, is shown here and the, the simple matrix of um, you know, trying to balance security and usability. Um, on the bottom there, you see passwords. As we all know, passwords um, have usability challenges for all of us can relate to that as consumers. Uh, they're either um, you know, too difficult to remember or if they're too easy to remember, it, it opens you know, a, a gaping security hole. Um, to that end, um, passwords are also notoriously weak for security. Um, for the main reason being that they're on a server. Anything on a server can and eventually will be stolen. Uh, traditionally, uh, the other means of you know, adding a layer of authentication to users is, you know, an OTP, one-time passcode, or you know, as, as a means of, of 2FA, and that's shown with the second icon in this chart. Um, and to be clear, any form of multi-factor authentication is better than passwords alone, right? And so even the most rudimentary MFA uh, will address you know, the vast majority of, of kind of low-grade, you know, scalable attacks. Um, that being said, uh, they still have some you know, many challenges, many downsides. And first of all, from a usability standpoint, as you see here, it has even wor worse usability than passwords, right? What's worse than one password is two passwords. Um, plus you have the challenge of you know, juggling devices or taking a code from one device to another. You have deliver deliver deliverability challenges if you're counting on SMS OTP as a service provider. Um, so there's usability issues with, with you know, traditional forms of MFA. Additionally, though, you know, security is also not infallible. And as we talked about passwords, anything on a server can and will be stolen. The same thing holds true for OTPs, because one-time passcodes are still a server-side shared secret, albeit for a much shorter period of time, but they can you know, be replicated and be manipulated through uh, replay attacks, man, the middle attacks and things like that, um, you know, which is what you see today, you know, with the more sophisticated phishing attacks that are used to take over you know, high value accounts. And for that reason, you know, what FIDO is fundamentally trying to do is, is you know, move the world away from its dependence on server-side shared secrets uh, to methodology uh, based on public key cryptography that allows users to authenticate using the device that they have in their hands every day locally to those devices um, you know, through a single gesture. So it truly is you know, simpler, stronger um, user authentication based on asymmetric pu public key cryptography. 
the key thing here, simpler in my view. Um, one thing we've all seen is that if security is too hard, especially second factor uh, of, of authentication, consumers will simply opt out, right? So our belief is that you don't need to say, be able to say or understand what asymmetric public key cryptography means to uh, realize its benefits. So that's been our vision since day one. Uh, that was realized uh, through you know, our initial sets of specifications focused on uh, native um, passwordless replacement, the UAF specifications, and also second factor specifications, U2F, universal second factor, where you had a second factor device um, to uh, validate the, the user, you know, that the user's in possession um, when they authenticate. Um, and both those specifications saw a rapid uptake um, in the marketplace uh, through a lot of leading brands. Uh, but what we realized is that if we fight to really gain scale, we had to reach a platform. Um, and that's what we've done most recently through the FIDO2 best of specifications. And this has created a much larger, larger addressable user base. So the service providers inside of FIDO and, and those outside of FIDO who we've been talking to over the past several years, and the question for them always was, well, how many of my users can I reach? How many users can you know, simply you know, use their machines today uh, and, and be capable of leveraging FIDO authentication? Um, and through the movements we've seen over the past you know, 18 months, it's gotten to be much larger. So as you see here, both Android and, and Windows uh, now have FIDO certified platforms. Um, additionally, um, you know, FIDO targeted the web through the web authentication protocol developed through, you know, in conjunction with W3C, um, which came out actually in May of 2018. Um, but through WebAuthn, you know, we now have full FIDO authentication support in the web itself. Right. And so that's been out there since May of 2018. Initially, it was very siloed in the core browsers, Edge, Chrome, and Firefox. Most recently, we've seen you know, strong support from Apple as well in Safari across their operating systems and devices. So all told, you know, we're now looking at you know, billions of uh, devices that can now support FIDO authentication, which means that if you're a service provider thinking about deploying FIDO, the good news is, you know, in all likelihood, your user, um, anyone on a modern web browser and a semi-modern device, you know, can leverage FIDO authentication. More specifically, as you'll see here in the next slide, on, on the browser front, you know, I mentioned this before that we, we've seen um, you know, broader support. So this is a this is admittedly an eye chart. Um, the key thing to take away here is that what you're showing, what we're showing, is FIDO2 support across browsers and across operating systems and transport transport protocols. This chart used to be much smaller. Um, it was much it was much narrower set. And so what we've seen over the past 18 months or so is that this has gone broader in scope, meaning more environments where FIDO is supported, but also it's moved from you know, largely red and yellow to, to largely green. Um, and most significantly is on the Apple front, last month they, they announced that um, you'll be able to use the platform authenticator, so meaning Face ID or Touch ID, on Mac OS and iOS uh, to log into websites through Safari. So that's an important progress as you know, Apple has not only joined FIDO, but is you know, aggressively supporting FIDO authentication, which really demonstrates how unified you know, the industry is behind FIDO as a standards-based mean of authenticating consumers worldwide. So as you seek to deploy, um, and this is part of what we tested for, is you know, thinking about different approaches for you know, how people do deploy. And, and ultimately, this will vary based on your individual company's requirements. Um, but three kind of general buckets to look at. One is kind of a mobile-first strategy. Um, you know, if, if you have a mobile-first use case and you're focused only on mobile apps, um, you know, the FIDO UAF specification is, is a, a great way to start. Um, you basically bundle the, the FIDO bits with your, you know, the SDK with your app. Um, that has universal support on Android and iOS um, and allows you, you know, to get started and in, in, in engaging with your consumers in a, a very user-friendly way that goes beyond simple password kind of cut and paste that you find, um, which comes with using the, kind of the, the device APIs. Um, and actually, you know, of course, brings the benefits of FIDO authentication um, and, and you know, public key cryptography uh, to the, that scenario. Uh, additionally, uh, security keys. So security keys have been um, used for a long time with FIDO. So the FIDO U2F security keys initially, the, the, as a second factor, um, have been on market. They've been deployed in many enterprises. We have some very compelling case studies, such as Google, uh, who deployed security keys to their employees. Um, 
tens of thousands of employees over multiple years have used security keys to access Google services. Not one of them has been successfully phished. Um, and security keys now, of course, support FIDO2 as well for a fully passwordless experience when logging into websites. But I think you know, security keys, we're primarily seeing them used in the enterprise and for you know, prosumers or kind of more um, advanced um, consumers uh, for things like cryptocurrencies and things like that. And you know, most recently, uh, we're seeing service providers target the use of platform authenticators. So this is for things I mentioned before that both Android and Windows lower or Windows or FIDO certified platforms. What this really means is that you can use a biometric on any Windows 10 PC and any Android 7 or later device to log in instead of a password. Um, so if you're on an Android um, handset right now, you can go to eBay.com, for example, and check out your experience there and log in. They give you a very simple um, mechanism for using the biometric rather than a password. Um, this is leveraging WebAuthn and FIDO2, uh, which um, you know, fully protects the users and, and you know, while also providing more seamless user experience. Now, the key thing to understand about all these approaches is that all of them are underpinned by the same FIDO architecture, the same kind of privacy-preserving approach um, of the, the FIDO authentication protocols. So with that, let me turn things over to Megan. I hope that what I want to do is kind of set the stage to explain you know, where FIDO is, you know, what we're seeing in the market, how people are deploying. Um, the reason why we undertook this research is that, you know, in so many ways, you know, 2020 and moving forward in 2021 um, is a period where we're seeing you know, many, many key stakeholders advance their FIDO deployment plans. Um, and inside the Alliance, we have different working groups and different bodies that you know, work together to help establish and not only kind of technical underpinnings for how these deployments will, will work, but also uh, help companies establish best practices to be successful through FIDO implementation. So as part of that, you know, we wanted to reach out, um, you know, we established some research panels to understand, well, how do consumers actually feel about this? Do they understand what FIDO is? How do they want to leverage you know, FIDO authentication? What do they want to see? What are they doing today? Now, these are all the kind of the key questions that we asked in the survey. Um, that Megan will now share the results on, and then we'll take questions on later on in today's webinar. So thank you, Megan. Let me turn it back over to you. Thanks, Andrew. So as I thought that was really an important foundation for Andrew to provide just to understand, you know, where we are in terms of support. Um, kind of always get the question, you know, why knowing that passwords are what they are, and if they're, you know, the bane of our existence and the cause for so many data breaches, well, why do we still use them? And the answer to that is that there's never been a solution, a, strong, a more secure solution that is as ubiquitously available as passwords, right? So if you're a web service provider and you have a login screen, you know, great, you can accept a password. Um, and we knew that, you know, we were never gonna get to the point where FIDO would really be ready for mass adoption until we reached that ubiquity. And I think that, you know, showcasing um, all the support across the browsers and the platforms really highlights why we're on the way to that ubiquity and that, you know, so many service providers are now, you know, on the cusp of their deployments and they're coming to us and they're asking, you know, what is the, the right terminology for this and that around FIDO? What kind of graphics, you know, can we use for a login screen? Should we communicate to our consumers about FIDO? Do, do they care? You know, do, would they prefer to just not know? Um, and so we wanted to take a step back and, you know, talk to consumers through our research company about these things so that, you know, we could make informed decisions and create informed assets for those deploying FIDO to utilize for internal and external communications. So what we did was we did a survey of 1,000 U.S. consumers. So this is just U.S., um, but we do have intentions of doing more global research as well um, to look at their usage, attitudes, preferences with login experiences on mobile applications and online websites. So general attitudes towards authentication. So passwords, how they manage passwords, SMS OTPs, different authentication mechanisms like biometrics and security keys. And then we wanted to teach them about FIDO and then get their feedback on the FIDO approach. Would they want to use it? If they did want to use it, how would they feel about seeing a FIDO mark at the point of login or somewhere else 
you know, within the service provider's website, would that be appealing or not? Um, so that's what we wanted to do. And I'll, I'll share some results with you now. Um, so coming into it, we did have some assumptions. And I think that Andrew said a few of these things in um, his opening slides. Um, you know, we, we all, you know, read other people's research um, where the FIDO Alliance, our mission is to reduce reliance on passwords. So yes, we do assume that consumers are not using best practices for password use. So if they were, you know, credential stuffing attacks wouldn't work. If they were, then, you know, they, you know, misuse passwords wouldn't be the cause of 80 some percentage of data breaches, right? So that's a, that's a assumption that we had, but we wanted to find out for ourselves, you know, how many passwords are they using? How are they managing them? That sort of thing. The other thing that Andrew alluded to when he was talking about the SMS OTPs was that consumers do want more security, um, but they're not gonna, you know, have a hassle experience in order to get it. So, you know, they would prefer something that is secure and easy to use at the same time. Um, the other thing that we assume is that consumers prefer to use tech built into their devices to log in. What we mean by that is so many consumers now are using either fingerprint or facial scan to unlock either their smartphone or their PC. Um, and it just seems that it would be a natural fit for them to then use that sa those same authentication mechanisms to log in. Um, and then the last one is that consumers would prefer to know what the underlying tech is for logging in. Um, and that is um, as opposed to just, you know, things happening behind the scenes and they don't know what's going on. And, you know, they don't know if, you know, why it's secure or if it's secure, um, but they know it's easy and that's enough. We think that they would prefer to know. So let's see what we found out. So we'll get right into it with the password. So yes, we were right, hooray. Most consumers are not using best practices for passwords. So it's not really a hooray. It's, it's yes, we were right, but it's not good to be right in this case, I guess. Um, what we found was that 52% of those that answered our survey use five or fewer passwords across all of their online accounts. And what's interesting is that only 5% says they said that they use a unique password for every site. So that's the best practice, right? And only 5% do that. Um, I can offer a couple other anecdotes. 6% um, said they use one password for all of their accounts. And then another 24% said they use between six and 10 passwords. So if we you know, do the math there, that would mean that 76% of everyone that we talk to uses 10 or less passwords. So you know, I think I've seen some estimates that the average number of online accounts per person is something like 90, but I've seen it somewhere up in the hundreds as well. Let's say it's, you know, conservatively 90, then, you know, obviously we're getting a lot of password reuse here. So then we wanted to find out, well, how are you keeping track of your passwords? Um, so the, the answers that we got were primarily keeping track in their head, writing them down, or just letting the browser store the password. So those were the top three. Um, I have a feeling that someone's going to ask about a password manager. 24% um, said that they use a password manager. Um, but what we did see when I was looking through the research was that there was a little bit of confusion around the difference between a browser storage and a, a password manager. So just we expect that there's some overlap there. And there's overlap across all of these numbers because people will use a couple different ways to keep track. But these things make sense, right? I mean, if you're only using five passwords, you can remember five passwords or three passwords. If you were doing the right thing and using a different one for every account, you would have to remember 90 or you know 200 passwords, which would be impossible. So these these track with you know what they answered for how many passwords that they tend to use. Um, resetting passwords. So resetting passwords is just an indication that um, the user either forgot it or whatever, however they were managing it got misplaced. Um, and so we kind of equate resetting a password with, you know, having to spend more time. Maybe it's being a little bit of an um, irritation to the user. Um, and on the org side, you know, depending on the organization, there's some, you know, costs associated with resetting passwords. So, um, Half reset at least one password every three months. Um, 76% um, at least one every 
oh, every three months and every six months. So more than half and then three quarters every six months. So we took in some, some free form kind of anecdotes too as part of this research. Um, how do you, what is your strategy for assigning different types of passwords? And we got a lot of answers to this. This is just a few of them that you see on this slide. Um, mostly what we saw was answers like, I have one main thing, one main word or one main password and I'll just like switch it up like one symbol or I'll change, you know, one lowercase or make something uppercase um, for a different website. And that's kind of how I manage it. Um, and then this one in the upper left was actually pretty interesting where, you know, I'll use one account unless the website makes me do something different or the website makes me do something more secure. And then I'll use a slight variation of that. But if it's one that requires, you know, a really strange password, I'm just going to ask for a new one every time I want to log in because I, you know, and I'm, this is my language now, but like I, the person can't be bothered with even trying to remember that. And I felt that this one in particular was interesting. And we saw a few like this that, you know, it's based on, okay, what does the website require? And if the website will take something super simple, then that's, you know, what they're going to defer to. But if the website requires something, you know, more unique, they're going to, you know, switch up their regular password. Um, but we do know, you know, based on some of the research, other research that we've seen elsewhere is that cyber criminals can very easily take one password and try different variations of that password when they do um, stuffing attacks. So, you know, the fact that these users are using different passwords actually, you know, might be a hindrance to them um, if they're if someone's targeting them for an account takeover. So then we wanted to find out about their usage and familiarity with different other types of um, authentication. So text messages, biometrics on smartphones and desktops, security keys and wearables. And what we found was that there's definitely, and, and I don't think that this is surprising, there's definitely more familiarity with biometrics on smartphones than there is with biometrics on desktops. And I think what that tells us is that we just have to continue to do more education around the availability of biometrics, such as Windows Hello, available on you know most PCs and laptops that are shipping today. Um, and what was interesting is that the um, the facial scan on the desktop was well, the eye scan and facial scan are kind of similar to each other, but those were the least. Um, recognizable of any of the technologies. Okay. So familiarity and usage aside, there's a lot of interest in using these technologies. Um, so we asked, you know, how interested would you, are you um, in using these technologies? So not just using them, but using them to securely access websites that have your sensitive information. So there's some idea um, in the question that this is a secure way to do it. And if, if it were, would you be interested in it? And across the board for all the technologies that we asked, for, asked about, um, at least half or more were interested in using it. Um, not surprisingly, the most interested was the fingerprint on the smartphone. And that's likely because most people are used to doing that today. And then lastly, um, we wanted to find out, well, if you had the option to log in more securely, what types of apps would you wanna log in more securely to? So if, if you could log in stronger than a username and password, you know, what would they be? And again, not surprising, but this was interesting for us to find out um, because when I share some information later about when we asked about FIDO, this will make sense of why we wanted to ask about this. So not surprisingly, online banking and personal finance. So things that are financial, financial related or personal data related were the top answers. So things like online banking or P2P payments, um, e-commerce payments, online cloud services like Google Drive, Dropbox, that kind of thing. Okay, so that was the conclusion of the general research. So next we educated them about FIDO. So what we did was we gave them 
um, a short synopsis about FIDO with some graphics that showed how the user experience works. We use really high level um, consumer oriented terminology to describe the security benefits and the usability benefits as well as FIDO. Um, and then we asked, do you find this appealing? So 76% said yes, they would find that, they find this approach appealing. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, interestingly enough, um, the security benefits were um, cited as more, slightly more important than the usability um, importance. Um, I think that, and that, that's interesting because we, we often will say, you know, it has to be usable to be adopted. And I don't think that this goes against that. I think that if we did some usability testing, we actually got, you know, these consumers in a room and worked with them on logins that we would see that the usability would play a more important role. But for the sake of this kind of survey, um, the security kind of was, was higher rated. Um, but still, these are highly rated across the board. Um, we asked them if this is more appealing than username and password or the use of SMS OTP, 83% said FIDO is better. 71% said they would trust a website more if it used FIDO. And finally, 77% are extremely or very interested in using FIDO for logins. So that's just the FIDO approach. So, you know, knowing that FIDO provides high security and a, you know, easy user experience, single gesture, um, these were the answers that we received. But we wanted to next show them some of our branding. So what do they think about the FIDO brand? And would they want to see such a brand at the point of login? Would it matter or not? So we showed them our three logos. So this is the FIDO logo, the FIDO certified logo, and the iMark. The iMark is the same little person that's inside of the FIDO logo, but is also available as a standalone mark. It's, it's our consumer mark, we call it. And then this button, which is our login with FIDO button. And then we asked them some questions. So we asked them, have you ever seen these logos? And the majority said no. And that was, we weren't expecting that that was the case because we haven't um, done any consumer products with the logo. So few have seen the logos, um, but many would want to learn more about it if they just saw it on a login screen. So 50 to 55% would click a mouse over symbol to learn more. Um, 39 to 48% would actually go out and do a search to find out more about the logo. And the reason why this is a range is because <clears throat> it's based on which logo. So we just kind of put them together. But the 55%, for example, on the left was the FIDO certified logo and the 50% was the iMark. Consumers like the login button. So we showed them the login button um, as part of you know, a, a mock-up of a login screen. Um, they said they would be willing to learn more about FIDO if they saw it. 80% said that they found the, the button appealing. But what's important is that FIDO logos or you know, showing that you're using FIDO, whether it's on your login screen or somewhere on your website, really invokes positive perceptions about you as a company with consumers. So on the left side here, you can see um, things like you know, so these are our agreement statements. So it would show, you know, up to date on current standards, innovation, protecting your their data, the, you care about them, you're trustworthy, um, you anticipate and address and address their needs, um, and and just a better overall impression. And then it would make consumers more likely to purchase from mobile retailers and online retailers, 70% for, for both. So now this goes back to, to the, the question before at the end of the consumer research part where we asked what kind of apps would you want to see, would you want more security? And it was you know financial and sensitive data type of apps. So then we asked, well, what kind of apps would you want to see FIDO branding at? And yes, they're in line with those same answers. Financial services, anything that would have personal data. So online banking, P2P payments, e-commerce, travel websites, that one, I was a little surprised that that one was above cloud services, email services. Um, the answers are high across all of these, 
you know, a little bit lower, you get lower as you get down to like, you know, music streaming and search engines. I think all of that makes sense. So just some conclusions, um, what we learned. So, you know, proper password hygiene, it's not happening. We shouldn't expect it to happen. On the FIDO side with specs and platform enablement reaching maturity, um, deployment set, you know, it's the time to educate consumers needs to, should start now. Um, the FIDO Alliance, you know, we're, you know, very well suited to provide assets for service providers to educate consistently, internally, externally. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And consumers, you know, they're not aware of FIDO yet, and we shouldn't expect them to be, but they really like the value props and they really would prefer transparency from apps and websites using it. So those, you know, those are the main conclusions of what we learned from this research that we did. So, now moving to the next part on our new education site, loginwithfido.com. So as I said earlier, you know, service providers are looking for more assets to help them educate internal constituents as well as their external customer bases. So if you're a service provider, you understand that, you know, in order to deploy FIDO, you need to get buy-in from a number of stakeholders within your own company. Um, and then when you deploy, obviously you need to do some education to your external um, customer bases. Um, you know, we as an alliance, we have a website, phytoalliance.org, which serves many purposes. It is a, a, a site for our members, or if you're wanting to become a member, it's a site to look at becoming phyto certified or to look at phyto certified products, of course, to look at the specs and download the specs. I can go on, there's a lot of things on the website. But the reason why I'm describing that is that if you're just trying to point someone within your organization to it, you know, a quick overview of what FIDO is, um, sending them to FIDOalliance.org might be overwhelming for them. And so with the learnings from our research, you know, and understanding what consumers want to see, um, you know, we decided that we should create, you know, a, a standalone site that could serve as not only a place where service providers could point their internal constituents, but also a place where they could then drive their consumers to. Um, once they've launched FIDO, or they can simply, you know, take some of the messages and graphics from the site and utilize it within their own website. So that is the new education site, loginwithfido.com. So I'll quickly walk through the site and give you just an overview. You know, you're welcome to obviously go to the site. There's loginwithfido.com. When you arrive to it, you'll be on the consumer site, but you can toggle over to the service provider site. So the service provider site is going to give, you know, benefits, you know, for the organization that deploys while the consumer site is going to give the overview and the benefits for the consumer that's using it. And it's all very straightforward. So it's very clean look and feel, not a lot of words, more graphics, the, the descriptions of the terminology, um, are very high level and straight to the point. Um, you're not going to see, you know, discussions of specifications on the site or, you know, um, technical terms or things like that. It's just, it's very high level. We have, we want to show the user experience because the most, you know, the biggest selling point for FIDO besides its security benefits is the very, you know, easy way that it is to log in using FIDO. So, you know, for us, we've always, we've had a lot of graphics that were like drawings and things like that. And we think it's important that a consumer can look at a graphic and identify it with what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So we wanted more true to life um, user experience graphics. And there's GIFs on the site that show the mobile and the um, desktop experience of logging with FIDO with fingerprint, facial scan, security key, and also the local pin. There's a video, um, I think it's like two minutes long video that's available for your use and to, to use with your consumers that just gives, you know, the very high level benefits of FIDO, how it works and that sort of thing. And new on the service provider page is the new service provider video. And I really would urge you to take a look at that um, if you're a service provider or, or not, but if, if you are looking for something that can help educate your internal constituents or other service providers, it's a really great asset that we just put on the site this week. 
And then a simple fact. So the FAQ is very simple, like what is FIDO? You know, where can I use it? Things like that. Um, this is language that, you know, you're welcome to use to help describe the technology or, you know, the benefits of the technology. Um, just all available for your use here. So how would you leverage it? If you know you can use it for internal education, you know, point your decision makers there. Um, it's you know a, a very easy um, kind of all-in-one. Just send them the link, and they should have everything that they need to get just the the quick one-on-one on what it is, its benefits, how how to use it, etc. External education. So once you've rolled out, you can link to the page on your on your login page or your informational pages, or you can take the, the language and use it on your own website. Now, if you have a FIDO certified server, you can now use our FIDO marks on your login page or elsewhere on your website. I just need to put the circle around the eye mark. Okay. And here's a few examples of how that could come to life. Now we do have a, a usage guide that is available. Um, this is just a couple of examples, so they're not meant to be prescriptive, but you can see you have a login screen that uses the login with FIDO button. You can see that, you know, there are a lot of companies, we understand that they might not have real estate for a button or they prefer to keep their button in their own branding. Um, uh, we're hearing a lot of interest in the Powered by FIDO, which is in the middle with a little hover mark with which you could, you know, either point to our website or point to an inner page within your own site if you want to educate a little bit more about what FIDO is and there's a little eye mark there. And then the, the third option here is not actually in the login screen, but below the login screen, login powered by FIDO. Learn more about FIDO at loginwithfido.com. Again, not prescriptive, but these are just a few examples of how you could possibly utilize the marks and or terminology on your own login screen. And with that, I think we can look at some questions. Great, thanks Megan and thanks everybody. I feel that some of the questions midstream. Um, Megan, I'll help kind of um, moderate the Q&A, but let me start with the, you okay. had a couple of questions on the methodology. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about you know, how we approach this, how the panel works and things like that? Uh, sure. So we used an independent research company called Socratic um, that did the independent research um, and they they fielded um, 1,000 consumers there. We have the, the full research report with the demographics. Um, it was a mix of demographics, both geographically, age, um, uh, gender, et cetera. Um, and it was an online experience. So they would opt in to take the survey and they would be walked through the survey in an online experience. Okay, good. Um, there's a couple of questions here on you know, how to use these buttons. Um, mm -hmm. as, as we touched on at the end of, towards the end of these contents, um, so these assets are meant to be used or it can be used by anyone who's implementing a FIDO certified server. Uh, so we have on the website uh, under the uh, legal and logo usage, uh, you'll see a, a license uh, for FIDO trademark and service mark usage agreement for websites. Um, if you're interested in using these marks, you, you just have to fill it, uh, click through license there. Um, and then uh, we'll provide you with the assets that you can use on the site. I'm actually putting that link in the, uh, the chat box now. Um, the ever popular question, uh, will we be sharing the uh, the recording of this in the slides? Yes, uh, we'll get this out to you in the next day or so. Let's see. Here's a good question. Um, not that any of them are bad questions. <laughs> Here's a particularly good one. Uh, if logging into a website or an app that uses a biometric on their Android for authentication, can a consumer assume it's using FIDO protocol? How would they know? Um, so again, this goes back to the heart of what we're doing here with these new marks. Um, you can't assume it's FIDO. Um, our belief again, and, and as backed up by the data, is that consumers ultimately will want to know um, 
what authentication you know, process you're using, that it is FIDO authentication. And so the only way for them to know is for the service provider to share that with them, either with the, the market login or the powered by FIDO messaging or, or button or something like that. Um, those are all the questions. Mean, we're actually we covered most of the questions. They all fell into those categories. Okay. One of the things I would mention um, in response to the question about utilizing the marks is that you know we are available. If you're using a FIDO certified server, you know we're available um, and at your disposal to you know help you or work with you to um, connect you with other service providers. You know if 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 you'd like to see how they you know are utilizing the marks. Um, or to work with you to kind of conceptualize some things. I do have several service providers right now that I'm working with um, on, on things like that, just to kind of fine tune terminology and the look and feel on the, on the screen. So, you know, we are, we're, we are here to, to assist with the usage of the mark. Okay. So Megan, I think we should go ahead and wrap up then. Um, do you have any final words? No. Um, so again, we will be setting this all this out. If anyone has any particular, you know, questions that didn't get addressed, um, Megan at FidoAlliance.org, um, shoot me a note, and you know, we look forward to speaking soon. Thanks, everybody. Please stay on to take the survey at the, uh, after the webinar ends.